Good afternoon, everyone. Eric here from Nomadic Fanatic. Starting our day here in Yuma, Arizona. Probably going to end up crossing over into California. But uh, first, I'm going to grab some lunch. Something's famous here in the uh, southwest. And just get a load of all these palm trees, guys. You guys know I love the sight of palm trees. It just means we're in good weather. So yeah, thanks for joining me guys. We'll be uploading this video with some Nomad internet. Link below in the video description if you need some mobile unlimited internet. Let's go get lunch. That's right y'all, in and out. A beautiful staple of the Southwest here. Um, I was gonna say it's been a while, but actually, uh, Jason and Candace and I went to one. They have an in and out uh, up in Kingman, Arizona, where their house is at, where their property is at. So, uh, anyway, let's go get a burger. All right, we're almost up there. They're pretty busy here today. Figured I'd uh, eat outside. View of some uh, palm trees around here. Pretty, pretty basic menu. There's only three things on their menu. Just went with their regular plain burger there. And then you know I'm gonna throw it on the ground. No, I'm not. I'm enjoying it. Mm. 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 In and Out is to the southwest what like Whataburger is to Texas. Two great burger chains. Not my favorite uh, burger chain. Uh, well, my favorite burgers are from Five Guys, and they're pretty much everywhere in the country. Where these ones are just here, and Whataburgers are only in Texas. Well, that was scrumptious. I don't know when the next time I'll be in this particular area will be, probably February. Um, I wanna go a little bit farther into California. Uh, Dave was telling me about another one of these campgrounds that's, that's included with my LTBA. A little bit farther into California though, about 45 miles on I-8. So I'm gonna pack it up, check on the kitties, and we'll, uh, we'll head west. Okay, we're in California now on Interstate 8, uh, heading west. It's uh, plenty of sunshine. That's close to 75 degrees today. Um, but I don't really like California very much, and I think I've been pretty vocal about that in the past. It is what it is. They, they just, they think that they're their own country and that everything else that's okay in the rest of the country is illegal here, including now, you hear this? Generators. On your RV, your own generator is gonna be illegal, uh, I think next year, starting next year. Portable generators, illegal, known to the state of California to be illegal. Uh, $5 a gallon gas, most places, I mean, it's just, eh. That's why I don't spend a whole lot of time here. It's a very uh, not RV friendly state. And the interstates, I'm on Interstate 8 right now. A little tip to you if you're coming from Arizona, Arizona, um, if you're towing a car, your speed limit is 55. For everybody else, it's 70. But for some reason, if you're towing, even just towing a smart car, uh, you, have a speed limit of 55 and they are pulling over people all over the place on this interstate. Like this RV that's gonna fly by me right now, he's not towing, he can go 70. I can't go more than 55. I think that's really dangerous because the cars, those cars aren't going 70, those cars are going 85, 90. They're going double my speed. <laughs> but it is what it is, that's what California chose to do. So I will go 55 because that's what California says it's safe and I will not use my generator because that's so harmful to your state. Okay. Really what they're doing is alienating all RV travel in, for the future. And Oh, but wait, it gets even better. They have checkpoints on the interstate. We haven't even left the country and you got checkpoints. <sighs> it's at their discretion who they want to stop. They just waved me right through that time. There'll be more, there'll be lots more. Well, I'll tell you this much. Don't uh, drive off the shoulder here on the interstate. Look at all that sand. It's just, it's literally like sand dunes everywhere in the middle of the, or on the outside of the interstate. Oops. And interesting, um, when I pulled into the border patrol stop up here, he told me to turn my camera off. At, at first I was gonna argue with him because like, like police interactions and stuff, they can't tell you to turn it off, but I think it's different with Border Patrol because they don't want you broadcasting like how the operations work at the border crossing and stuff. So I don't know. I didn't turn my dash cam off though. So like, and most truckers have dash cams, but he did tell me to turn this off at the border checkpoint. 
border checkpoint. We're not even... Okay. All right, we're getting off the interstate here. Exit 131. Uh, we're about 45 miles into California now. So, yeah. Road's a little bumpy now, but the name of the city is Holtville. And uh, if you have your sticker, this guy just flashed his lights. You know what? I know whose RV that is. That is Dave's Bounder. That's too funny. I'm gonna slow down because there's nobody behind me and uh, open up the window here. What's going on, Dave and hey, Bella? Hey guys. Hey. Well, that was fun. So Dave just gave me some information about the Hot Spring LTBA. And then he saw my post about going to In-N-Out. So I told him where to park to go get some In-N-Out burgers. And then we're gonna meet up in a couple days and uh, do something else. It's fun hanging out with friends. You don't always have to camp with friends. You can just do your own thing and then get back to them and, you know, so. But yeah, let's head up here to the entrance of the LTVA. Oh, look at all the baby palm trees being planted. It's just like back home, except instead of Christmas trees, just rows and rows and rows of baby palm trees. Oh, I want one. I want two. Okay, so bathroom over there there's some parking here for day use hot spring is right over there where all those palm trees are i guess is where the water's at but we're actually going to be camping here for the night so gonna head on in here it says hot springs long-term visitor area awesome i see dumpsters off to our left but i don't see water or a dump station here but lots of room to camp back in here so we're gonna have no problem all right, Opie, you want to check it out? They're changing the dumpsters out over there. Um, this place is pretty wide open. I've heard some stories that this place can get super, super busy and popular this time of year, but not, not the case right now in January. You don't have to park anywhere near anybody, and I don't even have to unhook the car because I'm right across the street is the uh, hot springs. So I don't know about filming over there or in there, so I'm gonna put my swimming trunks on and bring the camera over and we'll, we'll go check it out. I'm gonna feed the kitties some treats real quick. Tara hasn't woken up from underneath the couch yet. How come your sister takes so long to get ready? Right? Right? Get ready, sister. Say, Tara, it's time to come out. Tara, Tara, Tara. I know you're under there somewhere. There you are. We're parked. You're good to go, little scaredy cat. Yep, now you're gonna go sniff and smeal. All right, go sniff and smeal. It's okay, baby. We're not going anywhere. Relax, we're done. Poor girl. She's getting better, but you don't need to go hide again. We're done. <sighs> Do you suppose that uh, years down the road, Tara warms up and... I don't know. Some people have told me that, you know, girl cats are just always a little more timid. And, you know, I, I, I don't know any of those. All I know is I'm basing it off what Jax was like. And Opie is very Jax-like. He's just all over me and all over exploring and not scared of anything. And Tara's the opposite. I have two, like, kitties that are at both ends of the spectrum there. And it, it's okay. You know, I'll take what I can get. <laughs> yeah, let me get my cement trunks on. All right. Let's go check this out. See how popular the springs are. See how warm the water is. I don't even really know if I'm gonna get, I'm gonna, I'm gonna decide once we get over there, we'll see. All right, and again, for reference, uh, there's Interstate 8 up there. Traffic noise, really desert-like feel and everything. This is the parking lot over here with the restroom. And if we continue to pan over, all of a sudden it's just dense with tropical palm trees everywhere it's so randomly weird there's no palm trees anywhere else in this area it's just right here there's the interstate where that car is going so this is the holtville hot springs let's go peek between these trunks these are huge palm trees by the way look at that yeah uh, that water doesn't look too clean in there it's pretty though let me see what this sign right here says. It says no swimming. Oh, using soap prohibited. Please help prevent damage to the pond. Okay, so my mistake. This isn't actually part of the hot springs. This is just the pond. It's different. 
Okay, okay, so this is the only area where you can swim, by the way. So this little square part right here, and then there's three guys over in that little part. This is the only area that you're allowed to actually go in. And it looks like the water's kind of steaming. See how clear it is down there? So, yeah. All right, they weren't kidding when they said hot springs. This is like a hot tub. It's not warm, it's hot, hot. Jimmy's up to his, his neck, and he's standing on something there. There's a brick right there. I might be able to, I'm a short guy. There's a brick over there. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it. Wow, this water's hot. All right, water's up to here on me, standing on the brick. If I, here, I'm gonna go all the way down like this. Yeah, it's up to my neck. Up to my neck. It's awesome. And then over there, they got like a trough or something with some water falling also. Maybe that'll just cool you down a little bit. Woo! That's crazy. And a little spraying water and sit down right there. Let's feel that. That's still pretty hot water, actually. Well, that was incredibly refreshing and I can knock another one off my bucket list. I did a hot spring. There's, there's people that say that they stay here for the full two weeks. I mean, this is the cool part about that LTVA pass is you are not just stuck in the desert. Every one of these is different. You know, the, the lake that I was just at at Senator's Wash, hot springs. Um, you know, so you can spend your two weeks here and then you got to go to another one that's 25 miles away. It's just perfect. That's so good. And you're, I'm camping right next to us. So. so now what do I do, kitties? I said all that bad stuff about California and then I went and had an awesome time in California. Yeah, it was really cool, Tara. They had hot springs. And they did. They really did, man. Girl. Man. <laughs> Fine, I'll eat my words. I like parts of California. It, I just don't like the politics and the, how the states run, but there are some pretty spots, okay? Fine, I said it. Gee. Hey, it is time for a Litter Robot update. I swear I will keep this short if you're not interested, but I also promised my viewers, my uh, cat people out there, that I would be updating the Litter Robot 3 Connect. Tara, what do you think about it? Man, it's great and everything, Dad. It really is awesome, guys. After I realized um, that you don't have to unplug the thing when you're driving, you just push the on and off button right there. Yeah. <laughs> um, basically, it's it, I just don't have to do anything. I used to have to scoot my litter box three times a day. I don't touch this thing except one time a week. One time a week. Once a week, the only thing I do. Oh, and you see that got the step put on. I was telling you guys about the extra step. Once a week, I remove that. I pop this guy out and I empty the tray. That's all I do, there's no scooping. Once a week I empty this, and it's probably due right now. At least shake it and make it go down so it doesn't go up too high, but this device is one of the greatest inventions of our time. It just, and I know there are other versions of automatic litter boxes that do not work, but this one is amazing. Um, I do need to wash the walls, not frequently, but maybe every couple weeks, wash the side walls and stuff like that. But it is truly a blessing having this and in the RV and having more time to do stuff other than scooping litter for two cats. If you have cats in your home, if you are traveling with cats like me and you have the room for it, guys, I cannot even put a price on what I would pay again for one of these in my life. I will never go back to a manual litter box. There was even a time where I had two litter boxes. I had two, I thought that was a good idea. Now I don't even scoop anymore, literally. My job is done by a robot and I love it and I highly recommend it. Also, cool little thrift store find, I got a tripod for my cameras for 99 cents. Um, those of you that are into tripods and videography and photography and stuff like that, usually when you find a tripod in a thrift store, it's complete junk because it's gonna look something like this, looks awesome, but it's missing this piece up here. There's nowhere to hook a camera. That's why you find these because people lose this important device right here that has the thread for the, for the camera that I'm holding right now. This piece is gone. Throw it away. Why not just throw that away? No, they put it in a thrift store, and so you find 20 of these useless things in a thrift store. But I always go to that section and look anyway, because I just found something truly amazing for 99 cents in this guy right here. I literally don't even care about the brand, but it is a Velbon CX300. And guess what, guys? There is no clip that comes out 
when I saw that was there, I was like, whoa, you never see these. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's permanently attached. The thread itself moves, but there is no plate which means there's no movement also. I've had some time lapses like, well, like the one I just showed you outside with the sunset and stuff like that. If it's too windy, the actual plate inside here will move around and click and you'll, you'll see the horizon change a little bit, but this is priceless. You just put this camera on here and when it's on there, you twist this. You will never lose it because it's always attached. The only thing I don't like about this one is it doesn't have a hook for a weight. Like this one, this expensive one that I have right here, that little hook. That is in case you have a kitty who's moving the bottom of the tripod. Um, or if it's windy outside, it adds weight to the center, pulls it down. But I already have a fix for that, actually. I can just put a bungee around this part right here and then hang my one gallon jug from right there and it puts the extra weight on it. You know, because you always got kitties that knock over tripods and stuff. But we don't do that, Opie, because we're a good boy. It's not a toy. I'm going to be leaving California in my next video and doing something quite a bit different that you're not going to expect. But if you follow me on Patreon, you'll find out a couple days early. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll find out 24 hours early. And by the way, well, let's test out this tripod, actually. I finally got my Don't Be a Tater Hater Nomadic Fanatic hoodie. And I love it. If you ordered one, thank you so much, guys. I know these came in different colors. Also got my coffee cup. I went with the black handle and black inside. So awesome. And I've already seen quite a few people already show me or tag me on Instagram with their merchandise. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. I'm announcing in this video here today, Friday, that I've actually opened that back up. Actually, the old links will still work. But if you go to the video description below this page, there's still time to get your Nomadic Fanatic Don't Be a Tater Hater t-shirt, coffee cup, uh, hoodies, mm, you can also get a bigger coffee cup on there. We're gonna do that for a couple weeks here. I might not talk about it in every video, but it is open back up. A lot of people maybe didn't have the funds in December, but something changed in January, so I'm just opening that up back up to you guys, and thank you for supporting the channel. I'm gonna enjoy one extra day here without filming, without watching TV, news, social media. I remember I did talk about on Tuesday, I'm taking a social media break. Maybe I wasn't totally clear about that. I'm still going to be uploading videos to YouTube. Um, I'm still going to be uploading content to Instagram and Patreon. I may not be interacting on those platforms, but I'm still going to be uploading my content on those platforms. I'm just not going to be following all the social craziness, at least until next Tuesday. And then I will reevaluate everything and see how much I want to bring back in my life. Okay? From Opie and Tara and I, this is the first time I've ever held them both in the same shot. We will see you after the weekend, guys. Have a good one. Bye-bye.